This is something that everyone in the world should right. know. This gentleman is 78 years old. He's recovering, recovering from Parkinson. And yeah. this is what you can do when you have the mind, spirit, and faith to do it. Yes, sir. Oh, yes. Good job, sir. <laughs> I'll take a picture with you. Okay, so my name is Dan Latchamurdy, and I'm sitting here with uh, Master Dennis Kelly. Um, and today is uh, the 20th of July, 2016. And I want to interview um, Grandmaster Kelly today uh, since he just recently won another championship. At the ripe old age of uh, what? How old are you, Dennis? You're like seventy-eight years 70, young. Seventy-eight years, Dennis has been on this planet, and <laughs> where most people at the age of seventy-eight are um, trying to figure out uh, whether or not they can still swing that golf club or not, Dennis went out and won a world championship, U.S. Open. ISKA World Martial Arts Championship. If that is that correct, Dennis? Yeah, it's in the men's fighting division. In the men's fighting division, and that was just recently there in Orlando, Florida. And this is um, this is what Dennis, your fourth or your fifth or sixth world championship? This would make it my sixth. So Dennis has done six now. It's noteworthy enough that uh, Grandmaster Kelly has done this at the age that he has, um, but it's also even more phenomenal, and this is perhaps part of the main reason this interview in terms of um, people who are listening, is to uh, let you know that Master Kelly won this championship after coming back from Parkinson's disease. Right. So most people don't even ever come back from Parkinson's disease. It's I'm, re I'm happened. recovering, about 95% recovered. <clears throat> and so um, – I think it's a phenomenal story. I want to talk to Dennis about it. If there's anybody out there who um, believes that for some reason or another life has passed them by or for some reason or another 
they might feel they have um, what they believe is a debilitating or prohibitive condition which might be prohibiting them from doing the things that they want to do, uh, then I have to tell you that Grandmaster Kelly is a walking, living testimony to the fact that that's just not true. And so I guess where I want to start off, uh, Dennis, real quick is when did you first become aware that you might have Parkinson's or something along those lines? It was right close to the, when I won the world championship in 2007 at the Battle of Atlanta. Uh, I was at that point, a, I was peaking, probably in the best shape of my life. And then slowly, oh, months, several months later, I started going downhill in a sense. When I say downhill, my speed wasn't the same. I was losing strength at the gym. And this was uh, very subtly. It wasn't, you know, was sometimes I was just wondering from my imagination. But I wasn't doing as well in the tournaments. I, I wanted to fight until I was 75. That was my goal. And by the time I turned 71 and 72, I was really having trouble winning first places. I was coming in second and third, was not performing nearly as well. And then I had some of the telltale signs like sore joints. Uh, I was ha experiencing uh, trouble analyzing things. My mental acuity was going downhill. It was like being in a black hole, as my wife calls it. She calls it the black hole. I was really having trouble comprehending certain things. And I started, my right hand started trembling, I had slight tremors in it. And, and then uh, the first thought came to my mind, Parkinson's disease. But I didn't even want to go there. I kept burying my head in the sand because I didn't want to end up like Muhammad Ali or Michael Fox, who I have a great deal of respect for, both of those human beings, what they're going through or what Muhammad Ali went through, past tense. So uh, anyway, it kept getting worse. And then my wife started noticing it and she started getting concerned. So then I finally went and got diagnosed, and sure enough, it was Parkinson's disease. And the first thought came to my mind, God, why me? You know, I take care of myself, I exercise, I eat right 90% of the time. And then I thought to myself, God, why not me? Because I'm a warrior, and I figure if anybody could overcome this, I could overcome it. And so as a result, I made it a goal, is to reverse the process. I was not expecting to cure it necessarily, but just reversing the process would have been good enough, at least at this point, to, in my attack on the disease. So I went to, and got as much advice from my doctor, who specializes in Parkinson's and Alzheimer's disease and neurotransfer transformal diseases like those and uh, well so 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 for the ignorant and I throw myself include myself in that category um, kind of give us a little bit or, or if, if you can you know what exactly if you even know and maybe the the state of the science is that they don't know what causes Parkinson's disease wh what really is it um, and, you know, a little bit of background as far as that's concerned. Well, my doctor said, don't worry about it because there's nothing you can do about it anyway. That sort of got me off on the track of making it a goal to overcome this disease. So I did a lot of research besides getting as much information from my doctor. And as a result, I started making progress. One of the first things I did when I, I came across as far as knowledge is the research has shown that excessive exercise is good for Parkinson's disease. So that was really? the next thing. That was easy for me to do if I had a goal. That's when I decided to come back out of retirement and fight again because without the goal of, of having a tournament 
to train for. It was very difficult to exercise five, six days a week at the intensity that I needed to do to overcome the Parkinson's disease. So as a result, I made a goal. Uh, that was a year ago to compete in the U.S. Open in Orlando in, in July, July 9th, 2016. I made that goal way back at the beginning of 2015. As a result, I noticed changes for the better, and then I decided to really research the supplemental world and came across a company called Enzacta, and they had a special rice that was grown in Taiwan, the only place in the world that was supposed to help with Parkinson's disease and Alzheimer's. Okay, so, uh, so, so, so basically, I mean, going back, again, I'm ignorant – what is it? I mean, is it is it something where the neurons in the brain just ain't making the connection that they used to make? Um, is it, are the nerves coated with some sort of insulator or something? I mean, really, are, are you saying they have no idea what brings it on and at all? Well, they do. It's a neurological disease, and it had something to do with uh, lesions in the brain and what. I've done is I've been able to find some products that actually help. For example, one of the things that aggravates Parkinson's disease and helps expedite it is glycation. Glycation is when, the, you know, there's way too much sugar in all of our food. Glycation is when the, the sugar can't get in the cell. And the cell can't produce enough uh, uh, the uh, I'm trying to think of the word now. Have a senior moment. Uh, not adrenaline, but but uh, the carbohydrate. What? No. What's that? Carbohydrates. No, it, the cell uh, to to process sugar. The pancreas insulin. That's the word I wanted. Okay. That does not produce enough insulin to handle the sugar. Then the, what the sugar, the sugar can't get in the cell. Then the sugar floats around and attaches itself to protein and creates a sticky substance called glycation. And that destroys organs and that expedites uh, the process of Parkinson's disease. As a result, this helps decline it and it helps slow down the process at the same time. And that combined with the exercise, combined with my mental attitude, which is that of a warrior, and the the amount of exercise that I'm doing, the type of exercising that I'm doing. I'm, I've experimented with many different things, read every book I can on Parkinson's. So I did my own research along with the doctor's knowledge. As a result, it's working. And I'm going to compete again because... Here's the thing, the main reason I'm doing this, not just for myself. I feel if I can pull this off, if I can continue improving, continue winning tournaments, then what I will do is make everyone aware of this. They're aware of it now because when, I, when we finished, when I won my division, people came from all the different rings. It was unbelievable and wish me luck. One man wanted to pray with me. They they told me how how uh, appreciative they were of what I was doing and the example that I was setting. All races, ethnic background, people. There was no no prejudice in there whatsoever come over to congratulate me and hug me. And Because what happened is the judge at, at, at the tournament that I fought in, he found out that I was 78 years of age because they have the little sheet to show your age. And then when somebody told me I had Parkinson's disease, it was like he announced it to everybody. After I won, he said, do you know this oh, wow. is a true hero? And people came from all over. It took us an hour to get out of the, out of the auditorium. Then we got outside, and there was a group of 20 people. There he is. We, we, they wanted se uh, uh, selfies with their sons and their daughters, and they kept praising me, what I was doing, how I was setting an example. I, ne I expect I wanted to accomplish a little bit of that. I did not in my wildest dream expect that to turn out the way it was because I was only going to fight this one tournament, and that was it. But after that tournament uh, and the response I got, I feel I would be cheating people 
out of the uh, out of the motivation that I can give them by doing this. Sure, I'm taking a great risk. Sure, it's it's full contact and and I could get hurt. But the point of it is that's selfish. That's thinking of myself. I got to realize right now that I've got a gift, and this has been my dharma. And as a result, I feel that I can really reach people now with the seminar business that I have, with with books and things like that, and teaching people never give up inside of all of us as a champion. The body is the best pharmaceutical factory in the world. And 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 I I can teach people how to use century old secrets of the mind to build an empire out of a single thought. This not only helps with karate and with overcoming Parkinson's disease, it's the same principle to be a world champion mother, father, world champion policeman, world champion soldier, world champion anything. We have the ability inside of all of us to do that. Some cause okay, so, power, others call so, many different things. I call it the champion inside of all of us. So, so, um, okay, all right. So, so I kind of wanted to just talk about um, um, the tournament and your comeback, but I'm going to digress just a little bit here because um, I think what you're saying. Um, is pretty important, especially in the day and age that we live, when you start talking about um, the champion inside of all of us. And I was actually having some thoughts about this in a somewhat unrelated sort of manner. Um, and, I, and, and to be completely and totally honest and truthful, I have not been through Dennis's course. I really don't know a whole lot about Dennis's course. Um, um, without question, however, I'm sure Dennis is the guy, guy who takes his own medicine, which is true because he won a championship. But, but talking about your course, Dennis, real quick, the thing that comes to my mind, the big failing of... Uh, and I'll, I'll just say the United States of America, but I'm sure it's a worldwide sort of phenomenon. When you start talking about being finding that champion within you, doesn't that really start with the age-old uh, maxim that came out of Aristotle 500 years ago in ancient Greece when he first said, when when he said, first know thyself, right? So so. People don't do that. People have no idea why they're on the planet. People have no idea what, besides what maybe their mom or dad or their professor or their teacher told them that, or their counselor told them they should be doing, go to college, get a four-year degree, maybe an advanced degree, you know, go out in the world, you know, earn some money, buy a couple cars, have a couple kids, and, you know, you're done, right, without ever really knowing what it if that's really what they were put here to do, right? Absolutely. And so you and so you start talking about how you're a warrior and God bless America, you're not gonna let some little inconvenience like Parkinson's disease stop you from continuing to live your purpose. Very well put. And 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 so in order to continue to live your purpose then um, it became a single-minded focus for you to um, to do whatever you could do within your power, be it through supplementation, a strict physical regimen to come back and actually recover, be a testimony to the world that age is only a number, and that um, this thing called Parkinson's disease is not something that has to kill you, um, and you're walking testimony to that. But so, talking about your course real quick, um, have I hit upon it in any way whatsoever in terms of does your course help people come to that point where they go, oh, this is kind of why I think I'm on this planet? Because I think there's two important questions in life you should ask yourself any 
a any day that you wake up. The question is, is, the first question is, why am I here? Second question is, am I ready to die? Right? With with the belief and knowledge that, you know, the big kahuna, God, the creator, whomever, can take us anytime he wants. And if you can't stand up in front of him and say, hey, God, thanks for all the time you gave me on the planet, and I used it to the best of my ability doing what I came to believe was the reason you put me there, right? Right. Because I, I, I think that, it, it, you know, I, I don't want to get all spiritual and religious here, but, <clears throat> you know, that's my personal philosophy, and I'm sure most people probably would agree with that. So how does your course help me get to that point, Dennis? Let me just ask that question. Well, what basically is you, there, it, it's broken down in, in the several different sections, but the section that I like to really emphasize is there are three things that our course does that really helps anyone of any age, of any background, reach their goals. Number one is a good sense of direction. Being able to know exactly where you want to go, what outcome you want, and and not so not so much to get wrapped wrapped up in in the how, because the how will come. That's where people get stalemated. They they get into well, how, how am I going to do this? And what happens is you get a a good sense of direction and build up the why. And we call it the master action plan, and the the good sense of direction enables you to be able to clarify what you want to accomplish. And, that, and there's a lot more to that than that, but that's just touching the surface. And the next thing is good, healthy body. You can't get up in front of people and be an example. You can't exude any energy from yourself or from anyone else if, you, if you're not healthy. So that's very important as far as your prerequisite of being a success. It's hard to be a good parent if you're not healthy because then you're in your own world trying to overcome the obstacle of the bad health. And and believe me, health is not so much, in, it's too much in the doctor's hands and not enough in your own hands. So teaching you how to take care of yourself without relying on the doctor is one of the key things and, and really making the person understand what it takes to have a healthy body. And, and, of course, the master action plan does it, and it fits in with the mind is the map, the body is the vehicle, and the fuel is the spirit. Then the next thing is a good support system, having people around you that either know more than you do or better than you are at what you're doing or people that will add credibility to your goal that will help you, that will help motivate you to getting to your goal. I can always judge a person by the people they hang around by the people they spend their time with that's so important so when you have a good sense of direction and there's what what I, t I teach people the five power principles of success number one decide what outcome you want number two to build up the necessary passion and desire number three act number four see if it's working or not and number five make whatever necessary changes are needed but that takes it takes a, a plan to do that. Most people, they spend more time planning their summer vacation than they do planning their life. I mean, it's ridiculous. So those are our main things. And I always like one of my, my favorite cliches is you're a designer of your destiny. You're the author. You write the story. And the pen is in your hand. The outcome is whatever you choose. So it's getting people to know and realize that we have this fantastic internal power that I call the champion. And it's unlimited. And if you ask any group of people, do you believe that our potential is unlimited, almost everybody will agree with that. But people are only using a third of the potential. They're not using all of it. And that's so sad because once you learn how to use all of it, then any goal you want, any goal that you choose to choose, regardless of how hard or how difficult, can be accomplished. It's not rocket scientist science. It's actually the way of life. And so that gives you a pretty good idea. One of the things that I left out there is to really reach a goal. And goal setting was one of my biggest, 
how would I say, it, advantages. I I really researched everything on goal setting I could possibly find and studied goal setting so that when I set a goal in my own life, every goal that I've ever set, so far every single goal I've ever set in my life I've made. There is one goal that I haven't made yet, but I'm still in pursuit of it and getting a movie made of my life so that I can really reach out to millions of people rather than hundreds and thousands of people. And not as an ego thing, but as an informative and a motivation movie that would make people realize that no matter what their childhood has been, no matter what setbacks they've had in life, that they can overcome it. So it, it's really not necessarily targeted or tailored to athletes or sports. It's basically regardless of what your goal or objective might happen to be that through the application of this process with your coaching and your mentoring that um, people uh, can basically push through the challenges and the obstacles to achieve what they want to achieve in life, right? And, right, and you know, um, one of the key factors is building up a good belief system. In other words, if I'm going to accomplish any goal, what we are able to do is to help people build up this belief system because most people's belief system is terrible. It's not so much what they don't know that hurts them, it's what they know that isn't true. And so when somebody sets a goal, they, they would have to say, well, what do I have to believe that I need to do to make this goal? Well, I have to believe that I can. I have to believe that it's going to be a lot of hard work. I have to believe that it's, it's profitable. In other words, that it profit not necessarily meaning monetarily, but profitable as far as helping people. It has to have some value to it. And then when you establish that, then it's not very difficult to get people to switch over to tapping into that magnificent power. The problem is people don't know they got the power. Once you are aware of the power, you can use it, but you can't use something you can't, you don't know or don't understand. It's, it's having a faith that inside of all of us is that champion that can overcome anything. And so, so let me ask this question. So let's say, for example, I'm a used car salesman, right? And I just know that, yeah, I'm pretty good selling used cars, puts food on the table, and pays the bills, and I come to you and I say, you know, Dennis, I don't really want to be doing used car sales the rest of my life. Does your program actually help people discover what they should be a champion in? Yes, it does. First thing I approach is become the best salesman you can be, and once you establish that and set your goals, and and then look forward to the future. Senior. But I don't want to be a but, but but I don't want to be a salesman anymore, right? I I, I that's not I uh, I don't believe that's what I was put on the planet for, right? So, will your program help me identify what I should be doing instead of being a salesman? Yes, it will. Because what you would do is not not getting stuck in just being the best salesman. Barb just gave me a note here. <laughs> not, not, in other words, not in in just seeing yourself as the best salesperson, but seeing yourself in a big, beautiful new home with a brand new car, happy kids, happy wife, happy whatever. In other words, going past that. What the? In other words, as a car salesman, you might be limited, depending upon what type of cars you're selling. But it, it could, like anything else, it could reach its point where you feel you can't progress any further. That's when, when the goal setting would come in is not so much pinpointing what it's going to be, but seeing yourself as already a success as far as achieving different material things, spiritual things, whatever, and, and the emotions, the, the physical and the spiritual sides of things, and making those yeah. things all seem yeah. that then the answers will come. The answers will come. Well, uh, in other words, find your. I don't know. I don't know what I want to be a champion in. Right. That's that's fine. Just okay. So so I, about so, something. It's yeah. So I just want to know that you know after this call, I write you a check and say I want to take your program. 
that, and I say to you, I don't know what I want to be a champion in, that either through the process or through, you know, consults with you, that I get an opportunity to help figure out what I should be a champion in, right? Because my belief is that most people, when you start talking to them about you can be a champion, that there's a champion within you, personally, I don't think, I, I think that concept is foreign to a lot of people simply because the 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 society and the culture that we have is predisposed to breed mediocrity. Let me put it that way, right? Right. Um, and 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 from what I hear you telling me about your program is that is that and and you're very much somebody who believes that your life ought to be about serving others, not necessarily serving yourself. Because um, I kind of break people down into that sort of uh, uh, two categories as well. You know, there's people here to serve themselves, and there's people who are here that serve others, right? And 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 a champion um, going through your program, and it, at least from your point of view, is going to be utilizing. You're going to teach people how to utilize their God-given talents to the ultimate, highest possible level that they can to achieve a level of service which is um, pretty much beyond what they may have ever been able to achieve. Um, and maybe I'm way off base here, right? But I, I, I would say that that the because you can define it, and I don't really mean this interview to be somewhat a philosophical discourse or anything. But you, but the whole notion of the word champion is kind of fraught with um, misunderstanding, misinterpretation, right? I mean, it's not necessarily standing there with a trophy. It might just be when you go to bed at night and you lay down and you say, you know, thank you, God, for the most awesome day I had today ever, right? And you were a champion for that day, right? And, uh, I mean, that, this is kind of how I look at it, right? And and not that there isn't need and or room to do things like, you know, set goals, but, you know, I think people live – very quiet lives of desperation, right? And and so what I guess I'm drilling down for and for an affirmation from you is that it's it's like you can help people say you can help people cre to create the alternative to their quiet life of desperation. Right. Well, it's getting to work on yourself. Because you, to be a good example, you have to be able to over, you have to be able to communicate and manage yourself. So what this program, this course is, is how to become an expert in yourself, how to be able to uh, improve the mind, the body, and the spirit. And once you improve those things, the the why will come. In other words. Why do you want to do this? Why do you want to do that? The, it'll answer it. The how will come and the why will come. In other words, what direction you need to go, you live in the heart. That's the key. Teach people how to use the heart. The heart has the same kind of cells as in the brain. There is a brain within the heart. That's a whole subject on itself. And as a result, once you learn how to gain knowledge from the heart, and tie it into knowledge of the brain, it triplicates, quadruplicates your power, your effectiveness. You know, most people stop learning at 25. They're dead at 35. They just stay upright for another 30, 40 years. So what we do is we work at making people really want to improve. In other words, to get out of just contentment. You know, people, when they accomplish something, they go into the state of contentment. That can be very dangerous. It is an open valve, a nice, safe haven. 
It has no negative focus. It's sort of like, you might say, a place of rest. But passion makes it happen. Passion is living. Passion is creation. Passion is about feeling your power. You know, passion comes from the excitement of having something in the making. Contentment, on the, on the other hand, comes from looking at something already achieved. It's sort of more like a satisfaction. And I always tell everybody, contentment is the positive energy, true, but it's not a fuel. It won't take any place. It has no energy of creation. So that's why what we do is we get people to find out what their passion is. Once we find out what their passion is, then we can take and direct them towards how to maintain that passion, how to not allow other things to get in the way. Remember, no one else can dance your dance, sing your song, write your story. Who you are, what you do begins right now. You know, vision without action is just a dream. Action without vision is a waste of time. Vision with action, you can change the world. So getting back to um, your comeback from Parkinson's disease to win the championship, um, and, and I'm, what was your vision, to, to overcome the Parkinson's or win the championship? It was a combination of both because to win the championship, I would have to train really hard beyond reason. And by doing that, it enabled me to get in the ring and win because of the passion of wanting to overcome the Parkinson's and the passion of wanting to set an example. It was way. It, it was more important to me. This this was not about me. In the past, winning trophies, making a lot of money was all about me. This was not about me. This tournament. This was about setting an example being able to be the best example because the best gift you can give the people that are around you, the people that want to take your program is to be a good example. So that was my whole passion was to get myself physically, mentally, and emotionally fit for this tournament regardless of my age. Age actually to me was an advantage because of the fact that gain, with age gains knowledge. With age, by knowing and understanding the principle of success, you gain internal strength. Internal strength overcomes external strength by far, and we teach people how to build that internal strength. And, and that was what this last tournament was all about, was about helping people, setting the example, and uh, not, not allowing myself to get into the ego part of it anymore. You know, there, there's an old saying, you either pay the price of discipline or the price of regret. And discipline weighs ounces, while regret weighs tons. And you have to ask yourself, are you ready to pay a small price for the life of your dreams? And if, unless I get people to say, yes, I don't take their money. If, it, if they're buying a program from me, they got to say that emphatically. Are you willing to pay the price? Are you willing to discipline yourself to reach your dreams? If not, don't waste my time and don't waste your time. Well, those are excellent words of wisdom I, i'm going to have to listen to this over and over again because uh um discipline takes ounces and regret oh, what was it discipline is ounces and regret is pounds something like that, that was, that's great. right i love that Done. one you either pay the Done. price of discipline or the price of regret and discipline weighs ounces while regret weighs tons and then i ask are you ready to pay a small price a small price is not a major price for the life of your dream not like they okay. have this 24 hours a day. Passion is a creation. And the, the most important three words that we emphasize in the seminars, the most important three words are thoughts are things. Thoughts are things. Once people realize that through the proof of quantum physics and all the proof that is out there now with the success and failure of many people, is that thoughts are things. When you think of something and are passionate, it turns into a thing. It's something then you can touch and feel. It's accomplishment as a result of it. So thoughts coming from the mindset are things. We create those things through our thoughts. But the key is to get passionate about those thoughts. And the interesting thing, too, most people spend think they have to spend their whole day thinking of their goals. All you need is five minutes a day, five to ten minutes at the most a day of just visualizing your goal and feeling passionate about it. Then forget about it. 
Dennis Waitley said something quite interesting in one of his books, and he's got certainly the credibility to be able to say this. He says, when we set a goal and get passionate about that goal, 18 to 20 billion brain cells are automatically activated, and they vibrate at abnormal, rate, abnormal rates, and they send out information out to the universe to achieve those goals. Now, if you can get into the belief system of that, then you're 90% of the way home. Well, I mean, uh, it sounds to me like anybody who's living a quiet life of desperation who doesn't want to do that anymore needs to jump on board um, um, because I think once people start to really seriously be concerned about what their passion is and can come up with some answers for themselves, that's a pretty profound exercise in and of itself. Because then you do ask yourself, well, why was I put on this planet, right? Okay. What am I supposed to be doing with the time that I have here? Right. And, and, and in my seminars, I ask people, say, what would you do if you knew it was impossible to fail? What would you do if you knew it was impossible to fail? And once you get that out of them, then you can access their, their, their sense of values. And then you can make them, through our process, we can get the person to actually believe they can do that. If it's a goal that's too far out, they can't believe that they can do it, then we do not encourage them to set that goal. We encourage them to set a goal that they can believe, build a belief system to be able to make that goal through our process. And the process is teaching them how to do advanced goal setting. Advanced goal setting is simply a, man, a matter of being able to bring in the spirit, the mind, and the body. All is a trilogy in helping make that goal. So getting focused to the point of having a clear vision of what your passion and your purpose is is always the first step. Yes, and you, you must you decide okay. what outcome you want. Then develop the, uh, get as clear a picture as you possibly can. You don't have to get involved in the how you're going to do it. Just the why, the why is what the passion is. Why should I do this? What, why? And see yourself as already accomplishing that goal uh, before you even <laughs> start working towards it, seeing yourself as accomplishing it, and what would it feel like to be able to accomplish that goal? Just like, uh, for example, Five out of four out of five times when I imagined what kind of trophy I was going to get, I got that kind of trophy. Uh, that happened more than four out of five. I'm just using an example. For example, the tournament before this last one I just won, I, I saw myself uh, winning a. It came in second. I saw myself receiving a green trophy. Sure enough, it was a green trophy. This last tournament, I, I don't have a red and gold trophy. I and I vision a red and gold trophy. Sure enough, it was a red and gold trophy. So that, that can really get way out in left field. Once you start setting goals and you get good at it, it's like you build up this generator of power to the point where it's almost impossible not to make the goal. So what's your next goal? Pardon? What's your next goal? Movie. The movie. The movie. Well, okay. my intermediate goal is, is to fight uh, at the, either the Miami Beach tournament coming up in uh, November or at the uh, the Diamond Nationals in October. Uh, that depends upon me getting a sponsor. And that's in, um, those are both in uh, Miami or, or? Miami one, obviously, is Miami. The Diamond Nationals in Minneapolis. That's another world. They're both world. Well, the one in Miami is labeled as the international and the one in Minneapolis is, I think it's in October, I have to look at it again, uh, is labeled as, uh, as a world. So they're both world tournaments. I wouldn't compete in anything less than a world tournament. Well, of course, naturally. Um, so, uh, okay, so you're still training then, right, what you're telling yeah, me? Yeah, I took a two-week hiatus. I, I'm still exercising, but I'm going back into heavy training in the next two weeks. 
Um, and are you in full remission from the Parkinson's? No. No, I still have slight tremors, and I have sometimes uh, my mental acuity, but very rare now, will get lapsed on, like a senior moment. Of course, most people might get that anyway, but see, I'm, I don't relate myself to that age. So I, the tremors probably will uh, always be there. They're not getting worse. But the main thing is my mental acuity, my physical prowess, because the one thing that attacks all your muscles and glands and ligaments and, and you get stiff, you, can't, you don't have the balance anymore, I have I managed to regain my balance. I don't have the stiffness that goes with Parkinson's, and I uh, am as flexible now as when I was younger. So um, did you get a lot of people come up to you at the attorney who wanted to know what the secret was to um, my coming God, back from Parkinson's? You have no idea how many. It's wow. incredible. And I didn't want to commercialize it there. I wasn't about to say, well, why don't you take the supplement I'm taking and I can get it for I I, I re avoided that because I don't, I figure I'm looking for people looking for me. Um, um, it will, now, I don't know, but um, will it be okay to mention the name of the supplement and stick a link in the bottom of this interview? Yeah, uh, because I feel okay. very passionate about it, and I figure if I don't do that, I'm being selfish. Because then I'm keeping something to myself that would help many people. Everybody's different. I can't guarantee anybody anything. But I know that people that have been using what I use are getting results in most cases. The only ones that aren't getting results are the ones that don't take it the way they should take it. It's like anything else. If you don't follow the program and don't do what the experts tell you to do with the, with the supplements is you don't take it properly the way it's supposed to be taken, no supplement in the world is going to work. You know what I mean. So, so, so between the training and the, and the supplementation, um, how critical, I, I, I mean, um, I, I think you would recommend to anybody that if they're just sitting on their butt eight hours a day like yours truly, it's in, actually it's more like 12 hours a day, in front of the computer that I ought to be getting off my little skinny rear end and uh, start moving around a little bit more, right? Absolutely. Um, Movement is the key because of the fact is that when we don't move and we sit around, our body deteriorates at a tremendous rate. And with the body deteriorating, the mind goes with it, unfortunately. So let me ask you a question. I mean, I'm still pretty sharp. Um, now, this is going to be a first, right? This is going to be a first, okay? And um, I wasn't planning on asking this question. I didn't even know I was going to ask the question until a minute ago. Um, is this course that you're talking about available to, to me or anybody else online? Or is it all, is it all through either one-on-one -on -one consultation because what I want to do, Dennis, right here, right now, is is to be able to say to anybody, hey, if, if, if you want to find out more about how to find, nurture, and manifest that champion within you, what should they do right now? Well, one of the things in, in the past we've never taught in a seminar, the complete program, it's always been parts of it, and and this is we're putting together all the parts of it into a whole program right now that will blow people's minds. And that part is in the process right now of being formulated. It's being put together. It's not formulated. It's already formulated. Just That was incorrect comment. It's put together. Uh, it needs to be put together. The pieces are like a puzzle. We got the picture. All we're doing is putting the pieces together now. Okay, so if I wanted to send you some money, I can't take the course. Is that what you're telling me? Not right, right now? today. Okay. Um, so for all the people who are listening, when do you expect that that course is going to be available? It should be done within the next 30 to 60 days. All right, so let me ask you this question. Let's say that um, I happen to come 
find this recording, listen to it, and money is no object with me, can I be personally um, coached by you through this course over the uh, telephone? We can do it over the phone. Okay. All right. Yeah, and, so and the, don't get me wrong. The, the pieces that we taught were very valuable, like, uh, like free streaming from HeartMath Institute and the different systems of increasing our belief system. So they're all... They all were separate seminars. With the ob with the objective was to eventually bring it all together in one wonderful master action plan under the colloquialism of trineurogenics. And that would give them the complete history, the complete program of everything that we have putting into uh, a total self-improvement program. So if anybody's listening to this wants to find out more, they should just get in touch with you and we'll leave some mechanisms on this page for them to do that. And then you'll reach out back to them and talk to them about possibly coaching, mentoring, taking them through the course um, individually. Is that correct? That's correct. We, we can do it over the phone and, and right. we can do it. We can do it. We can, uh, our intention too is set some live seminars like at Battlebrook where they come from all over the United States and spend say, a couple days, that's in the process, too. No, but, I, no but, but I'm just talking about right now, people who are listening, they go, I want to participate in this program, I want to find out more. I can't travel, but I want to be able to do it just over the phone. Is that yeah, possible? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. All right, great. Um, so um, what I want to do uh, is kind of wrap this up a little bit. Um, because I think basically the message is that, um, you know, if uh, somebody can win a martial arts championship at the age of 78 as part of a process of recovering and overcoming Parkinson's disease, then, you know, hopefully people will be inspired by what they've heard and a little bit of your story um, here in this um, interview at this point and maybe – um, we can help other people find their own sense of of passion and become and stop living a quiet life of desperation. Um, so, Dennis, anything you want to say at the at the very end here? Uh, not really. Uh, except the fact is that we have had great success with people of all walks of life with even just pieces of the program. And whether they're going for to be a world-class athlete, we worked with athletes, worked with individuals of all walks of life, ethnic, ethnic backgrounds, and so on. So I'm very passionate about the fact that anyone that takes this program serious is going to really accomplish things way beyond their dreams. And, that, and, and within 30 or 60 days, they'll actually be able to come back to the website and uh, hopefully be able to actually purchase something that they can learn in their own time. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay, great. Well, okay, so that's it. We've been on the phone here for almost an hour or so. Uh, I hope that people found this useful. Um, I certainly apologize for being a little bit of a blabbermouth on my end. Uh, I'm not what you would call a professional interviewer, but I did want to get the message out, help Dennis get the message out, um, about what he just accomplished, which is totally phenomenal, and the fact that the process and system that he used in order to accomplish what he accomplished um, is something that he teaches and will make available uh, to anybody who wants to reach out right now at this point by you know getting in touch with a phone call or filling out the form on the website. So, uh, Dennis, I want to thank you for your time. Well, thank you, Dan. I appreciate the opportunity, and uh, we'll be looking forward to hearing from anyone that's interested.